welcome to uh, another great interview here for HD Houston today on Wednesday morning. I'm here with Kent Nuttall, who is the president of Torch Solutions and also has been very involved with ATD Houston for quite some time. So I'm happy to, it's an honor to have you here today, Kent, and I'd love to just um, first open up by maybe if you want to give a little bit about your company, what you guys do, and also I'd love for listeners to hear about your involvement with ATD over the years. Okay. Well, first of all, my company, Torch Solutions Group, is thoroughly involved in talent development. That's, that's what I do and forever. But it took a turn when um, I just finally, shall we say, got tired of the way things were. And so since then, I've been developing a program for both businesses and employees that says, here's how to really play, uh, work through the talent development mess that you're in. Hmm. I, I cover issues such as the fact that goals don't always work. In fact, goals sometimes stifle creativity and, and things like that. And uh, then the other thing is, is that you get a lot of talent development advice and it's really nice and it would work if you were in the same situation as the people who gave you advice, but <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yep. So what I, what I provide is a strategy for people, a fairly simple strategy that, that can be modified to the specific situations. And, um, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, it's a strategy that I look back at I, and I say, gosh, I wish I had this back when. Right. But You don't know what you know until you know it, right? No, I, absolutely not. And, and really, our careers, we, we kind of learn by, by <laughs> trial and error through everything. And, and, and I've not seen a good strategy or tool mix before. So I, I created one based on human performance improvement. That's... That's the cool part about it. The model uh, performance improvement gives us an idea of strategy. So what I did is I moved, uh, I created the strategy from that and the tools from it. So essentially it covers all the great elements of human performance improvement, which, which includes the measurement mechanism. Because as a person, there's no way you personally can use Kirkpatrick four models or anything like that, okay, four, four levels of evaluation. You just can't. But we can do it individually. And the best thing for an individual it does is it helps you build the story of your career, which makes doing, um, uh, creating your resume easier, mm -hmm. gives you the stories you need for the, the times you talk to people, the 90-minute talks, the, or 90-second you know, hello talks, as well as the interviews. Yeah, um, no, that's... I, I I'm feeling uh, like I'd love to have a second interview with you where we just talk about your company because I know that's not the topic, that main topic we're going to have today, but that's, that's very interesting. And um, yeah, I'd have a lot to say about that as well, uh, given my background, but we won't go, go into that. Although maybe at the end, I would love uh, if we have time to talk about goals being stifling, maybe after we talk a little bit about the certification process, but that that might be a cool thing for listeners to hear and maybe what your take is on that, if you're okay with that. And that'll be fine because really, you know, this talent development, I love the certification process because it's our talent development. It's, it's us as it's the instructional designers of the world, the training managers of the world, it's all. This certification ties right into what I, I love to do, which is why I'm, I'm excited about the capability model that was added too, which is going to be part of this discussion about certification. Excellent. And um, just briefly, could you, like I'd love for uh, people listening to just hear a little bit about your involvement with over the years. Could you just tell us a little bit about what you've done? Well, I go way back in ATD because I joined a chapter years and years and years and years ago back in college. And when, uh, when my college had, happened to have one of the early chapters of ATD. This is back in the 80s. And so that was my early involvement. Then I stayed involved as I could through the years. I have, was in one city for a long time, which didn't have a chapter. That was, that was upsetting to me. So when I moved to Houston in uh, uh, 89, I, I found the chapter. And by, oh, what was it, 2002, 
2003, I think it's 2003, I, I ended up on the board. 2002 or 2003, I ended up on the board, thanks to Jill Hickman, who recruited me out. And uh, that started the process of me staying on the board until I took a turn being president in, in the year 2007. Uh, so I was president for that year. And, and then since then, I've always tried to find to do something, tried to find something to do every year for uh, for the board or for the the chapter. And one year, my favorite year was I had heard that uh, Kirkpatrick was on his last year of going out and speaking to chapters. And so I asked the board, I said, do you want him? And they said, yes. And so I got him. <laughs> but, <laughs> at that time, he was older, so his message was less, less, less than perfect, but his son came and delivered the meat and potatoes about the Kirkpatrick model and and it was a good present. It was a good discussion, and a lot of people got to meet the original Kirkpatrick. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Well, I uh, that's I'm just honored to have you on today and get to know you a little bit better. And I know we met because I had submitted a presentation to be one of the speakers at the conference. So that's that was our engagement. So I know you did that this past year or this year, right? Booking the speakers for the conference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I got the call and said, can you help? And I said, sure. I just, <laughs> it's hard to turn down service to ATD when they, when they ask. I, it's, it's a good organization. I would agree. Well, let's, um, so let's dive in. So today, I know the topic that you uh, are most likely going to be presenting on with Robert is going to be uh, what, certifi what cert certification can mean to you. And so, yeah, let's just, get started and please educate me as well because I'm learning more about the certification process. Well, so a lot of us have been wanting certification for forever. Like I say, I'm an old, long time ATD. So there was a lot of pressure and it was in, in uh, 2006 that they finally decided we needed a certification. And that's where they come at, came up with certi certified perform and learn certified professional learning and performance. Um, uh, there were a few of us in Houston that were in the second group, none in the first group, in the second group. And it was a learning experience. Uh, the first group had done a lot of, I talked to some people who went through the first certification. And it was like filling your way through because there were no study materials. Uh, they were still working on the test. They were still doing a lot of things. And then by the second time, we had the study materials at least, but we were still learning. Uh, I, we had projects back then that were graded and that continued for many years. And so what we've had is this wonderful effort to say there has to be something like the PMP, like the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. these, we said, we've got to be able to say, I am in learning performance and I'm certified. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that luxury for a while. Um, I searched many years helping with the certification process. When we did have products, we had people who graded products and there were a couple of times that I, well, more than a couple of times that I served with them. So there possibly were people that I said, you're not good enough yet to be certified. <laughs> and others that I said, yes. And since then, I've also been part of the evolution where they've gone to the testing as it's done now. And I've, I've gone up to and helped even with the new APTD criteria. So, so let me just uh, make sure I understand. So this is a certification that is nationwide now for talent development professionals? Worldwide. Worldwide. Oh, absolutely. Worldwide. Um, we used to, well, we saw people from all over the, the world, Taiwan and Europe and Australia. We, yeah, products were submitted from all over the world, and so people tested all over. That's amazing. And so it started with ATD Houston. Am I understanding that correctly? No, no, no. It didn't start with ATD Houston. It's okay. just hard. I got, there were a few of us that took that, the second generation of the test, okay, the second test. So we got involved early. And the main reason I got involved was I was going to be president. <laughs> Okay, I thought, well, if I'm going to be president, I'm going to be certified. Right, right. And then it was then later I found out that I it, that was the only the second group that that ever made it through. I gotcha. 
And so, I mean, I know you mentioned, P, you know, getting like a, the project manager, the PMP. I know that that seems, because I've had a lot of clients that are project managers, that seems like a pretty standard certification necessary. CPTD, which is Certified Professional in Training and in, in Talent Development. TD is Associate Professional in Talent Development. So what we've done now is we've taken the certification to a different level. Um, and we've said... Real, real quick, when you say we, who's we? Uh, Nash, the national. I guess I guess I participated so much. I, I talk as if I, I, I was... I was involved with meetings that helped take this to a different level, which is the TD, the talent development. Because before we were learning in performance. And that didn't fit with our change from American Society for Training and Development to Association for Talent Development. So we needed to change the certification to reflect talent development because we were focused on instructional design, learning and management functions, et cetera. But we really didn't handle the other elements of talent development. We didn't handle the, the dealing with hypod activities, definition of high profiles, definitions of uh, uh, really working the whole talent structure all the way through, okay? Because talent development is a lot more than just training. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And really, you can't evaluate programs well if you're only just dealing with the training function. So this is also helping us on the evaluation arm is that you now have access to the whole thing. So retention is part of us. How are we involved in the retention process? Well, you know what? Sometimes our training is. Sometimes uh, other talents, things that we create are involved in retention. So we're part of that process. And our measurement comes out through that too. And I guess, you know, my question coming back is how, how effective has getting that certification been for um, professionals to get land the kind of jobs they want? Um, in the earlier days, it wasn't as much effective because, uh, frankly, the organization didn't push it as hard. To They didn't know really how to push it. Well, but these days it's changing because we now have enough people that it's getting the recognition it needs. So right now, it's effective for you if you talk it up, okay? And what that means is don't go into an interview or anything without saying, hey, man, I've earned my CPTD. Mm -hmm. That's either going to get you respect or it's going to get, what's a CPTD? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. but either way, then you get a chance to talk about your CPTD, and you get respect for having gotten a certification associated with a profession. I expect more and more uh, companies will request or say CPTD or APTD preferred on their job requisitions anymore as well. You know, helping people be able to put together information that will help them take, tell their career story better. So if you can do that along the way, I know for me, because I've been a career, I've helped coach people in career development and professional development for quite some time now. I've gotten good myself at like kind of outlining what I do when I work for a company, whether it's, you know, contract work or a job. So then I have those stories to kind of understand um, how they apply to the next position. But that's been because I've spent a lot of time helping other people and you know practicing what I preach myself. But it's it's amazing, is my point. If you could get in that, it's just it's developing a skill set that you know I ninety nine percent of people I know weren't taught. I, and and that's true. And this is why I like the certification because they've come out with a new tool to help people with the certification, and that's the capability model, the ATD capability model. And for that capability model, um, it used to be we worked to, towards competencies, okay? But I'll just say competencies, uh, that term is wildly abused. Competency now can mean anything from a task to a major chunk of a process, okay? And so when they were working through this, uh, the, the people in uh, Washington, D.C., area, uh, the ATD, ATD headquarters, decided we, we don't really want to use that term because 
it, it doesn't represent what's going on. And so they used capabilities. Do, I, do you have the capability to do this? Do you have mm. the that? And so it, the capability to do it subsumes everything that drives into that capability. Right. And so it changed the language. And in so doing, it made it possible to have a, a much nicer model of what we need to do. Because here you have talent development. Talent development is broad. Broad, okay? So you now chunked a lot of things into capabilities to know, well, I'm on, I have the set of capabilities that will help me do this part of the process. Right. <laughs> capabilities for that part. And it allows us to be who we are and stay where we are and, and improve where we are or, or spread wide. Yeah, it kind of sounds a little bit like maybe specializations. We do have specializations in our industry, just like everyone else. Right. And there will be people who get really, 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 really good at e-learning. But don't ask them to manage e-learning. Don't ask them to really focus too heavy on something else. It just right. Don't, don't ask them to present. They like to present behind the screen, not in front of the people. Mm. <laughs> there are, there are it, it's hard to swing and be perfect in all the capabilities of the capability model. It's just, it's not going to be some, something that you work on. Right. You want to, you want to master some, some of them. Right. You want to know where do you want to go next and then build the capabilities for that. Or how can I get better in what I'd like to do? One of the two. Or something strong first and then as you get later in your career you'll spread out and decide now I want to grow here yeah and I love that because I know for me I'm very multifaceted and I imagine a lot of people in talent development are where it gets hard to know especially because I've been a business owner for a while you know it's it's a lot of work for me to go back and like understand what I was doing in the moment of this you know creating so much stuff because I created a lot of content and course e-courses, but like, what was I actually doing? What was I, you know, what was, where were my strengths? Where was I building more capabilities? And so to have that kind of outline and written out would be, I, I imagine, extremely helpful and just help you stay organized and focused. That's what I'm yeah, hearing. Yeah, it will. Uh, because first of all, you can go backwards and then you can go forwards and then, and then you can go sideways. But the biggest biggest element of it is we have a lot of companies that still write competencies or, you know, sets. They're trying to find how to measure you as an employee. Okay. Right. That's, that's the thing that needs to happen. Now you can take the capability model to them and teach them your language. So that they're not trying to say, well, I came from a uh, sales and now I'm the sales training coordinator and I'm, dealing with all these instructional designers who are from instructional design and I'm trying to understand them. You need language is big if you really want to be evaluated well. And so using the capability model, you can actually go and do a self capability, self evaluation mm -hmm. to your supervisor and talk about the real stuff. What right. stuff the industry and it's related to the industry and you can say it comes from ATD, the professional society who happens to know these things. <laughs> exactly. This capability model uh, will help you find what you're still, what you could still grow in, where to go, what, what to emphasize. It'll say, do you really know these elements of e-learning and stuff like that? You know, and you can put your comp, your, it, it's a self-evaluation. So you, you know, Put your number down there and you say, I'm really comfortable, I'm not. And then you see your pattern. But then the nice thing is, is it ties into ATD resources, this capability model. So you now know where to go to find more information for the places that you want to develop further. Okay. And, and based on the titles that are in the ATD, stuff that they give you, it also gives you essentially titles that you can look for on LinkedIn, Lynda.com, and any other place that you want to go. Right. It can, it can lead to helping you know what to discuss with a mentor. Right, exactly, yeah. And, and that's what we need, is we need to expose ourselves to where we want to develop next. And if we don't have a nice something to get us there, 
or just kind of point and shoot. And that's when we go to these communication skills classes and realize we were already good communication skills people. We didn't really need that. Right, right. And you're totally right because I know I'm very confident that if I started looking at the capabilities that it would help me get clear on what I do well or not. Because even within all the stuff I did, I don't know, you know, am I good at instructional design? I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's my thing. That, I didn't that until I started coming to talent, you know, talent development meetings. So I didn't have that kind of language and understand what things were, you know, specific things. So I, I definitely just, think I could benefit from that. And then if you, since you're already developing, okay, then you may want to go ahead and certify because then you join this group of people who are certified, who have a language, who talk. It might open a door here or there. I'm not never sure. But if you're talking to a company, you know, people in the, the train, talent development side and you can say, I, I got my CPTD, it, it'll be worth a couple of points. Yeah. And, and, and the other element is it's like every good certification program, you have to maintain it. So it, it's good for three years. And then you have to take courses, give speed, uh, give presentations, write articles, you know, there's a whole suite of ways to continue to get uh, recertified. And so it builds that discipline in you to yeah. keep going. Yeah, and I totally agree. It's like, I feel like that accountability is so necessary and important to keep us accountable, to keep growing and learning what's evolving and new in the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's why we do it is, is that, that, that keeps us going, keeps us qualified, keeps us everything. And, and uh, like I say, even I can take that certification and say, hmm, do I really want to develop this area next or am I comfortable where I am and just keep growing the, the area I'm currently with. And so those capabilities that, that you're talking about are part of the certification process. Is that correct? They will be used. Yes, they, they, they are because, if you don't have a certain level of capabilities, there's no way that you're going to pass the exam. Yeah, because if, if I were to do my certification now, I'd be using the capability model in conjunction with my study. Okay. And that way I would also know what further I can do in this field. There's, there's still a lot of people who look at this field as, you know, just mostly training. And uh, I believe in branching out in your industry so the capability can help you find those branches that you might enjoy even more than just stand-up delivery you know yeah absolutely so it it's just good to get that it, it, it exposes you it guides you it directs you and certification gives you discipline and it gives you power a little bit of power and confidence those are all great things in my, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, is there anything else you'd want to share about the topic, you know, on certifications that we didn't get to today? Um, I just encourage it because it's like, especially with the capability model now, it's, it changes. And by the way, if you take the capability model, if you do a self-evaluation of the capability model, your input is anonymously fed to the entire system so that ATD National knows what, what's needed by all their populace, where they stand. But more importantly, ATD Houston gets uh, the results for people in our area, and it will be used for program selection. So if we find that there's a whole lot of people that could use We'll, we'll find it. We'll, we'll, the ATD Houston board is now tuned in. That's great. Yeah. Gosh, we need programs in this area because there's a lot of people who feel they're just not there. Right. So it's good. It, like I say, there's so many good things about it right now. I, I was excited when I got certified. I'm really excited with the, the, the way it's been going now. I think it's getting more recognition. Uh, it's possible that uh, companies in the near future can use the capability model for their employees. Um, sounds, I, sounds like it's a 
Yeah. <laughs> Here in February that they might have an enterprise model that companies can use. So lots of opportunity there. And because all of these things are coming, if you're in the industry, especially if you're an employee in the industry or a major player in the industry, it, get involved. It'll help. That's great. Well, Kent, thank you so much again for taking your time to you know, be here today and share your wealth of information experience with listeners and myself. Um, is there any way, you know, people want to learn more about what you do at Torch Solutions, like what would be the best way that they could follow you or connect with you? Well, of course, you can connect through my website, torchsolutionsgroup.com. Uh, you can also find me in the uh, ATD directory. I've got an email in there and a phone number in there. And I'll take questions and help people through. That'll be fine. I think those are the easiest ways to catch me. Well, thanks so much, Kent. Um, yeah, it was a pleasure to have you, and uh, I'm sure I'll see you soon. Take care. Hey, thanks a lot, Scott. No problem.